In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, a reading from the mystical city of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda, literal rendering of the sentence of death pronounced against Jesus of Nazareth, our Savior. 647. I, Pontius Pilate, presiding over Lower Galilee and governing Jerusalem, in felty to the Roman Empire, and being within the executive mansion, judge, decide, and proclaim that I condemn to death Jesus of the Nazarene people, and a Galilean by birth, a man seditious and opposed to our laws, to our senate, to the great emperor Tiberius Caesar. For the execution of this sentence, I decree that his death be upon the cross, and that he shall be fastened thereto with nails, as is customary with criminals. Because in this very place, gathering around him every day many men, poor and rich, he has continued to raise tumults throughout Judea, proclaiming himself the Son of God and King of Israel, at the same time threatening the ruin of this renowned city of Jerusalem and its temple and of the sacred empire, refusing tribute to Caesar, and because he dared to enter in triumph the city of Jerusalem and the temple of Solomon, accompanied by a great multitude of the people carrying branches of palms. I command the first centurion, called Quintus Cornelius, to lead him for his greater shame through the said city of Jerusalem, bound as he is and scourged by my orders. Let him also wear his own garments, that he may be known to all, and let him carry the cross on which he is to be crucified. Let him walk through all the public streets between two other thieves, who are likewise condemned to death for their robberies and murders, so that this punishment be an example to all the people and to all malefactors. I desire also and command in this my sentence that this malefactor, having been thus led through the public streets, be brought outside the city through the Pejora Gate, now called the Antonian Portal, and under the proclamations of the herald, who shall mention all the crimes pointed out in my sentence, he shall be conducted to the summit of the mountain called Calvary, where justice is wont to be executed upon wicked transgressors. There, fastened and crucified upon the cross, which he shall carry as decreed above, his body shall remain between the aforesaid thieves. Above the cross, that is, at its top, he shall have placed for him his name and title in the three languages, namely in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. And in all and each one of them shall be written, This is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, so that it may be understood by all and become universally known. At the same time, I command that no one, no matter of what condition, under pain of loss of his goods and life, and under punishment for rebellion against the Roman Empire, presume audaciously to impede the execution of this just sentence, ordered by me to be executed with all rigor according to the decrees and laws of the Romans and Hebrews. Year of the Creation of the World, 5233, the 25th day of March. Pontius Pilate, Judge, Governor of Lower Galilee for the Roman Empire, who signed the above with his own hand. 648. According to the above reckoning, the creation of the world happened in March, and from the day on which Adam was created until the incarnation of the Word, 5,199 years, adding the nine months during which he remained in the virginal womb of his most holy mother, and the 33 years of his life, we complete the 5,233 years and three months, which, according to the reckoning of the Romans, intervened between the anniversary of his birth and the 25th of March, the day of his death. According to the reckoning of the Roman Church, there are not more than nine months and seven days to the first year, 
since it begins its count of years with the first of January of the second year of the world. Of all the opinions of the teachers of the church, I have understood the one which corresponds to the reckoning of the Roman church in the Roman martyrology to be the correct one. This I have also stated in the chapter of the Incarnation of Christ, our Lord, in the first book of the second part, chapter 11th, 649. The sentence of Pilate against our Savior, having been published in a loud voice before all the people, the executioners loaded the heavy cross on which he was to be crucified upon his tender and wounded shoulders. In order that he might carry it, they loosened the bonds holding his hands, but not the others, since they wished to drag him along by the loose ends of the ropes that bound his body. In order to torment him, the more, they drew two loops around his throat. The cross was fifteen feet long of thick and heavy timbers. The herald began to proclaim the sentence and the whole confused and turbulent multitude of the people, the executioners and soldiers, with great noise and uproar and disorder, began to move from the house of Pilate to Mount Calvary through the streets of Jerusalem. The Master and Redeemer of the world, Jesus, before receiving the cross, looked upon it with a countenance full of extreme joy and exaltation, such as would be shown by a bridegroom looking at the rich adornments of his bride, and on receiving it, he addressed it as follows. 650. O cross, beloved of my soul, now prepared and ready to still my longings, come to me that I may be received in thy arms, and that attached to them as on an altar, I may be accepted by the Eternal Father as the sacrifice of his everlasting reconciliation with the human race. In order to die upon thee, I have descended from heaven and assumed mortal and passable flesh. For thou art to be the scepter with which I shall triumph over all my enemies, the key with which I shall open the gates of heaven for all the predestined. Isaiah 22.22 22. The sanctuary in which the guilty sons of Adam shall find mercy, and the treasure house for the enrichment of their poverty. Upon thee I desire to exalt and recommend dishonor and reproach among men, in order that my friends may embrace them with joy, seek them with anxious longings, and follow me on the path which I through thee shall open up before them. My Father and eternal God, I confess thee as the Lord of heaven and earth, Matthew 11.25 Subjecting myself to thy power and to thy divine wishes, I take upon my shoulders the wood for the sacrifice of my innocent and passable humanity, and I accept it willingly for the salvation of men. Receive thou, eternal Father, this sacrifice as acceptable to thy justice, in order that from today on they may not any more be servants, but sons and heirs of thy kingdom, together with me. Romans 8.17